Let's take a look at things to consider when you want to expand your workforce planning program globally. When you're launching strategic workforce planning inside multiple countries, there's the additional challenge of trying to figure out should you centralize or decentralize strategic workforce planning. Some of the advantages related to centralizing is that you can share tools and processes. You can share resources. You can leverage the budget that each region has. The disadvantages are that you are going to have differing regional challenges. You're going to have certain aspects that require knowledge of local laws and regulations, and you're going to require knowledge of local workforces. So globalizing all aspects of strategic workforce planning may not be practical, but you can determine those aspects that you can leverage by centralization. So when you go global with strategic workforce planning, what you're going to discover initially is that inside almost every global company, the workforce challenges that you face across the globe are different. For one particular company, they existed in North America first. So their workforce was fairly stable and their market was fairly stable in both Canada and the US. However, for South America, Europe and Asia, the conditions were quite different and quite volatile. With these aspects, the way that you want to do workforce planning will actually be different. To go global with strategic workforce planning, I do recommend establishing a global lead. So even if workforce planning exists in multiple regions across the globe, you should have one central location established as the actual lead. That location can be responsible for evaluating which strategic workforce planning activities can be centralized. You would need to consider geographical differences, differences in regional strategies, cultural differences, and existing skill sets. You can establish a communication method for regions to submit strategic workforce planning requirements, and that central location can help to assess whether incoming requirements can benefit multiple regions. Let's take a look at two types of global decisions, and these are just two examples of many. So for example one, we're going to take a look at moving existing talent to locations on the globe that need those skill sets. In the second example, we're going to look at strategic movement of job functions actually into other countries. This is becoming more and more popular. When trying to move existing talent to another country, the biggest challenge is money. The cost of moving an employee can be very substantial. Additionally, to incentivize an employee to move into certain countries often requires paying an employee substantially more than what you would pay a local employee. When trying to internally locate employees with certain skill sets globally, most companies do not have a source of global data, so finding these employees is often by word of mouth only. This means that finding an opportunity for a global assignment is often overlooked for most employees. HR systems often record an employee's profile information, but very few actually record information on whether an employee can or would be willing to take a global assignment. Finally, in most companies, internal job postings are only available in your own country. Jobs are not posted in a global system. Taking a look at the example of moving an entire job function from one country to another, why would you want to do this? Having employees in certain countries can be very expensive, so companies have started looking into whether they can shift job functions out of those expensive countries and into cheaper ones in order to minimize the cost of their workforce. But not all jobs can be moved. When considering moving a job role to another country, you will need to consider whether that job role requires any local knowledge like labor laws, for example. Does the job role require being able to speak in certain languages? Is the work tactical or strategic? The easiest jobs to move are tactical ones requiring no local knowledge. When you try to do strategic workforce planning across the globe, communications is probably the most important factor. The use of live webcasts are often very useful to span the various time zones and to minimize business travel. You can use these live webcasts to demonstrate workforce planning tools that are available. You can select certain common tools if they can be used in multiple regions, again to leverage budget and resources. You may determine that there are some unique tools that you will need to address regional challenges. So what did we learn from this short section on global strategic workforce planning? 
You will likely need global workforce visibility before you can begin making talent moves across country lines. You'll need to identify each region's challenges in order to identify opportunities to solve common issues and leverage common tools. You don't actually need a large budget to extract value from strategic workforce planning. I hope this section has provided you with a little bit of information in case you need to expand from a local strategic workforce planning implementation into a more global program.